Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Lisa Jarrett, and I am one of the co-founders and co-directors of KS MOCA, the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. School Museum of Contemporary Art um, in Physical Time and Space. We are located at Dr. MLK Jr. School in Northeast Portland, um, but this is our 2021 Remote Artist in Residence and Artist Lecture Series. I'm joined today by my co-founder and co-director, Harold Fletcher, and also one of our primary collaborators, Amanda Lee Evans. And we are proud to share the work of Intisar Abioto with you today. Um, I am going to introduce Intisar and then turn it over to her and we'll have an opportunity to learn a little bit about her work and her practice. Um, Intisar is based in Portland, Oregon, but was born in Memphis, Tennessee in 1986. She's an artist working across photography, dance, and writing. Moving from the visionary and embodied root of Black girl Southern cross-temporal, cross-modal storytelling ways. Her works refer to the living breath and breadth of people of African descent against the expanse of their storied, geographic, and imaginative, imaginative landscapes. Intisar works in long-form projects that encompass the visual, the folkloric, documentary, and performing arts. She has produced the, the People Could Fly Project, The Black Portlanders, and The Black, among many, many, many other things. Um, Intisar is an absolutely amazing artist whose work I admire greatly, and I'm so happy to have her with us today. Um, please feel free to ask questions in the chat if you're joining us live on YouTube, and we will make sure to share those questions with Intisar. Um, and to our Dr. MLK Junior School students, um, we really love to have your questions, so please do let us know. Don't be shy. And um, we're also joined by a group of Portland State University students who may have questions as well. So um, Intisar, um, without further delay, uh, welcome. Thanks so much. Yay. Well, thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. I'm excited to share. Um, I love KS Mocha um, and all y'all are doing. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, um, I'll just start talking. Um, and yeah, like I uh, like as I said, feel free to send questions, and I'll try to respond. Have it be responsive. Um, yeah, well, I'm a photographer. I'm a writer. I'm a storyteller. You know what? Let me double check. Can you all see my screen? Okay, good. Okay, yes. Uh, so um, uh, I said yes. So photographer, writer, dancer, storyteller. I really love stories, and, and I really love um, adventure and curiosity and research and finding your own adventure um, through all those things. Um, and uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, I started, well, let's see here. Um, so art is just so important to me. I feel that it's like connected to just who we are as, 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 humans and as spirits in this world, it can contain so much about human time and history and feeling and memory. And you can communicate so much about um, all, all the questions of life uh, through art. You can communicate um, all kinds of things can go into art making. And it's such a beautiful way to explore life. And uh, I've used art and I'm still using art every day, um, trying to use art to um, experience life, experience myself and experience the communities that I'm a part of. Um, so I'm just going to go through some different slides today, some of my work and also talk about how I think about stories and art making and also try to share um, like um, how, so I know I'm talking to a few different um, like age ranges here, um, but how you can use art and storytelling and research to have your own adventure. Um, that's very important to me. Um, so yeah, so uh, let's see. Let me go full screen. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, I'm a photographer, a dancer, and, and, and someone who likes to explore things. And uh, I'm very much interested in self-made adventures and adventures that you can have with, I guess, people you want to have adventures with. Um, 
And I'm interested in art as a place, as a way to make space and to change uh, places often to be better um, for the communities that we live in. And, um, and so I like to use, well, well, first I'm gonna talk about like origins that like stories um, exist where we are. Like we're all carrying all kinds of stories. Like we're carrying our own stories. We're carrying the dreams that we dream at night. We're carrying the dreams that we wish for our lives. We also carry the dreams of so many people before us and our community members. Um, and stories are something that you can just pull out of your mind or the air in a conversation with someone. Um, and it's powerful because you don't have to go too far. Like, so uh, this is my family. I think this was during Kwanzaa one year. Maybe I was in the third or fourth grade. I'm in the bottom right. Um, so there's so many, there's so much feeling. Um, to being alive. And that's the basis of story to me. And so when I think about feeling and art and memory, I think about, yeah, I think about my memories. I think about the people who cared for me. I think about the people who I loved. I think about Memphis because that's where I'm from. I think about the way the air is in the fall and the smell of like grass in the summer. All of these things you can use you can put feeling into the art you're making. And so uh, this is me. I don't think I'm six years old. No, I'm not five years old here. I think I'm like six. So this is my first year of school. This is first grade. Um, this is my grandmother in, uh, in the family house in Memphis. And when I look at this picture, um, I feel so much. Like I look at my grandmother's hands and um, I like I see the plate that she ate on and this was years ago and I see this warm light, you know, in this in this wood kind of paneled room. And even though um, and I took this picture. Um, I took this picture, uh, I think I was 20 years old or so um, and but even if I had not taken this picture, I had the memory inside of me. And I can pull that can pull on you can pull on memories um, to tell all kinds of stories. Well, yeah, I, well, I took this picture of one. That's one way. Um, but I could also I could also tell you about it without the picture. Um, it's the stories are a way to time travel in my mind. Like it's so powerful. Uh, this is a picture of my grandfather before I was born, of course. Um, and I love, I love, I, you know what, I'm going to go, I'm going to go close details in this, uh, in this talk. Um, I love this picture. I didn't take this picture, of course, but I love the soft focus of his face here. And I love the, or, or the even softer focus of, um, of his shirt, you know, feeling, even though I wasn't there, I feel like I could touch the, um, I can touch that shirt and feel the surface of it like 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 photos are so powerful um because yeah it's just a sensory um it's a sensory recall it's so much about imagination um it's a way to feel even deeper that's how i think about stories a way to feel deeper um so yes yeah, so family like uh, this is my family in Memphis. This is my grandma's house. Uh, yes, so this is where, ooh, <laughs> yes. I love when I discover things and things that I forgot. I'm okay. So this is my grandma's house. Um, this is, my aunt is sitting where my grandma was before. And, and here you can see, uh, you can see, you can see, family pictures in the background. And I must have, I, I printed that photo that that you just saw. If you look in the left corner, you'll see that same photo um, that I uh, that I took in the corner there. And I love that. I love, 
I love, I love, I love layers of time and memory, you know, um, that, that, that uh, art making, but also photography is one way to literally change time, to uh, alter what can occur. It's, it's awesome. I love that. Even the way my hands are looking in this thing, like you can layer on history and memory and uh, change things in the present and the future. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is just like I think of home, I think of memory. Uh, these are my grandparents on my mom's side on the left. Oh, yes. So my grandfather that I showed you a second ago, he's in the left side here. And uh, that's my that's my grand so that's my mom's grandmother on the uh, on the right. And these are um, other family members. My great aunt. This is at my great aunt's house in 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 California. And this was after my grandparents died. And so I went to her house and I saw pictures of them there. And then I would think I I think when I came when I went, I may have been twenty one. So then I was in my great aunt's room and I took a photograph of myself with those pictures at her house. And now I guess maybe 13 years later, you can see me, my, I had just started my locks. <laughs> and now they're so much longer, uh, but they were just starting there. So I love it. I love laying on history and memory. And even the fact that I can talk to you about this now is so special. And I uh, and I like and I want you to think about anyone who is uh, any like students, whether at PSU or at or at KS Mocha, just think about finding the stories where you are because they're going to be so valuable to you uh, later. You know, um, here I have this self portrait. Um, yeah, this is it's it's very powerful. Um, and so this is a this is a photographer who was in the community when I was when I was growing up. His name was Ernest Withers. Um, he was a civil rights photographer. He uh, d he documented um, the civil rights movement um, in 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 Memphis. Um, and um, so I uh, I took this picture with him. I believe I was 20 years old, and 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 my dad took this picture on my camera. Um, and so, also, yes, talking to artists and photographers in your community is uh, is so important. That often we think of we think of uh, either stars or celebrities, or we think that uh, that information that is important is outside at another source, but it's right there. Like, ask, you know, if you have family members, like, you know, like be curious about the people in your community because um, it's very powerful when we, when we uh, connect our stories together. Um, and you can take so much power and inspiration from uh, other artists. I did not actually meet this man. I don't remember meeting him until maybe I was 18 or so. Um, but being able to meet him at the start of my photography, um, um, or I started to teach myself when I was 14, but when I was, you know, young, it really just in seeing his work influenced my work. Um, so I'm here also because he was here, thinking along those lines. Um, so this is my father here on the on the on the left and this is Sakita McKinley an artist who I grew up with um who all these people so many people in your life um share their spirit with you they like through their care and their work and being able to see them doing work it 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 goes into us you know these stories um they go into us and they they last I think about I I even, you know, I think about if I were to lose um, all that I have, and obviously I don't want that, but we carry, we carry stories in our, our body, and it's so important to realize. So uh, this is my sister, Aminta Abioto, um, and this is my mom. Um, she's, uh, they're, they're artists, you know. Uh, this is, uh, these are my aunts. Uh, so my, ooh. You know, I'm going close stories today. Rather than going far, I'm going to go close. Um, 
Uh, yeah, so my my so this was at my grandmother's. Uh, this was at her burial, and my and so of course the family came together um, at the um, at the family burial ground, and these are my aunts. They were singing a song together, you know. And I look at my I look at my aunt's hands, you know, like their nail beds and the way their hands are, and they're similar to to how to how my hands are. These like even how my hands like so a lot of us like at the at the at the ring of of the nail bed it's darker like all like photography is a work of detail and intention of 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 paying attention to the tiny details and letting them flow into you flow into your body your mind and interpreting it uh taking it in um it's powerful that's how i feel i feel that it's all so powerful. And everything I'm sharing with you, I hope that um, you consider when you're considering art making or thinking about art or not even just about art, but who you are and what you care about. You know, we all have things that we, dreams that we have and it's so personal and it's so emotional. And art is a practice to help you touch your dreams you know these these people are my dreams you know i care for them so deeply and it's for me photography is one way to love others um so um so these are more family things um these uh this is another one of my aunts um um so my aunties when they were young girls um they were a part of the civil rights movement the sit in the movement in Memphis, Tennessee. So uh, from between the ages of 12 to I think maybe 22, um, they were, they were uh, there in Memphis. So even if we're thinking about times right now, you know, um, the Black Lives Matter movement, um, like human rights movements, you know, um, um, I took this picture maybe three or four years ago, they, this, there was this marker that was put up about their work. And so we're, 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 um, we are history, you know, uh, you, you are never too uh, young or too old to um, influence time and um, how we care for one another. Um, yes. Um, so this is also a family thing. So yes. And like, and also my sisters, like, you know, uh, before I, um, I'm gonna come back to this, but before I came to Portland, I was um, I was working on a project with my sister. So this is my sister, my sister, Aminta, and this is my sister, Kalima. I think I was 21 here. I think Aminta was 15 or 16, and we went to Djibouti, West Africa, together without without parents to to document. Um, but yes, I wanna I wanna come to Portland because I wanna I wanna talk about where we're at. Um, so um, I wanna talk about documenting where you're at and finding stories where you're at. Uh, I took this picture in 2013 uh, on 16th and Alberta, which is right down the street from King School, um, and I had moved to Portland um, with my family in 2010 and uh coming from memphis from the place where i lived and i did not know much about this place um uh, i did not know about its history i did not know um being um someone of african descent who comes from a family of uh black uh like uh bl like bl uh black people who were brought here enslaved from africa um you know um i think a lot about black history and culture and so when i came here i didn't really understand what that was here because i wasn't from here and uh one way that i began to find out was i took my camera that same camera that i started teaching myself uh with when i was a teenager well, no, it was a different camera, but a camera. Um, uh, and I started uh, talking to, um, I started talking to black 
Portlanders, black people that I met on the street. I would approach them and say hello. Um, and the first picture I took was on MLK. And I'm not sure what street that was, like going or shaver. But then the, the pictures right after that whole, the start of this project really started out on Alberta Street. Um, um, yes. Um, and I'm just gonna go through a few pictures here so you can see. So this was on Alberta Street. Um, I, I, t I like, I approached this gentleman, I said, hello. Um, I believe that I said that I'm working on a project about Black Portlanders or, you know, I've actually, I, this was the very beginning. So I might not have even said that. I just may have said, you know, um, you know, I'm wanting to learn more about what's, you know, Black culture here. Um, and this, and I asked him if I could take his picture and he said yes. And then I spoke to him probably about um, something. Um, and so uh, both, oh yes, there's details. So one, this man, um, and I haven't seen this man since, this moment but even this building here this uh business here um is not here i don't know if you all have talked about gentrification at ks mocha and all these things but this build this this business is no longer here there's a different store here um and so um there's so much information in, in photographs and artworks like this was a moment in time um and it's very precious. Um, I took this at a coffee shop in Alberta Street. I, uh, this, this was another uh, person that I just walked up to and uh, said hello. I took this on Alberta Street too. Uh, just said hello to these young women, asked to take their picture. Same to this gentleman. Um, I don't know if you can tell that this is Alberta, but streets have a certain feel, you know, communities, have a certain feeling. So do neighborhoods. You can, you 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 can recognize things like even these poles um, here on um, you know uh, when you walk down down Alberta Street and um, so also Alberta the Alberta area was the first it was the first place I lived here in Portland. Um, so yeah, uh, when you walk uh, the, when you walk down Alberta Street, you can see. You know, you always record, there's always those flyers on those um, posts, you know, and even you can see, even you look at this box here, the Portland, the Portland, the Portland Mercury, um, you know, all these little things. And even, even being able to look back at, there's so many things this, uh, uh, yeah, about this woman, her style, her nails, you know, uh, we all events a spirit, you know, uh, like a way that we are. And I love it. This is also on Alberta Street. Uh, this is also on Alberta Street. I pulled all the Alberta Street ones for you all. Um, I love, oh wait, no, actually this is not Alberta Street. Hold on, wait a second, let me think. No, this is on Albina. Albina is like right as, right as Mississippi turns into Albina. Oh, Albina, I'm not sure how to say it. I'm still, you know, uh, yes. Or, uh, or I hear different people saying it different ways. Um, but yeah, so, oh, okay. So yeah, so I started this project. Um, uh, I started this project. I took those portraits and, and I put them online on Tumblr, which uh, so many people don't use as much as we did then. Uh, but on Facebook, I shared the images, the, the, the stories that, you know, these, in, these, uh, these, I shared these moments and I put them on Facebook and, um, and then other people begin to look at the photographs and share the photographs and they recognize themselves and they recognize people that they had seen in their communities. And they were like, is that so-and-so? Or I haven't seen so-and-so since, you know, since, I don't know, like, like since the last time I saw them, you know, and especially dealing, thinking about the history of the black community here um and gentrification and uh this um you know the uh purposeful history of of moving um black portlanders out of their communities i don't know how much you all have learned about that but it be, it was a way for people to see each other across space in the city you know it was a gathering like a meta community 
um, yes, I love this picture, you know, and also put it on Instagram, you know, also these old, older gentlemen, um, I took their picture on Alberta Street too. And uh, I don't know what day it was, but I just went and said hello to them. Um, and uh, yeah, like, I know I'm not going far in these tale, in these pictures. I want, I don't know, there's something special about intention, detail, like, um, yeah, I, I love talking to these gentlemen. If you look at their picture, there's just such a presence and a buoyance and, you know, their, this, their warm smiles, you know, um, and their looks and um, how he has his arm around the other man. Like, um, there's, um, it's all so special. Um, and actually, you know, when I'm thinking about time and history, um, a few years later, um, I heard someone sent me a message to the Black Portlanders, and they told me um, that the that the that the gentleman on the on the left here with the blue shirt that he had passed away, um, and they asked me if I had photos of him. So then I was able to send his family members pictures that I had taken of him, and so um, yes. Uh, Yes, paying attention to the stories around you, the people around you, it's never unimportant. Um, and the detail work is very important. And I'm still working um, to be better and better at detail and care, you know. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still learning, you know. You learn by going, and that's a part of adventure too. You just keep going, you keep learning. The journey teaches you new things. Ooh, wait, let me check something really quick make sure no one has sent me a chat okay i don't see one okay uh yes uh, this is on killingsworth um street um uh this grandmother and her grandchildren this is so sweet um i can you know honestly i could study these pictures all day i could tell you so many details i could just i love i love their faces i love this the young boy's profile here I love, um, I love the young girls, her smile, her sweets, uh, uh, just smile, how open and, and like frontal facing it is. I love the, the young boy's face. Um, this kind of curiosity in the eyes, if you look, he's like, his, um, his eyebrows are a little raised, you know? Uh, whereas if you look at the girl's face, it's a, you know, it's not as raised. It's just, I love all of that. This, like, this is what makes a photographer. For me, I, I, I primarily often take portraits. So I love, I like, this is how I love my community. Um, you know, by, by paying a deep attention and um, holding on to things, holding on to these works and sharing them with you all so that we can see and we can feel how, how valuable and important we are. And um, we can build up a spirit of care and regard. Uh, this is also on Alberta Street. His name was Johnny D. This was also another um, artist in the community who passed and I took his picture several times. Um, this is another, uh, this is also on Alberta Street. Uh, there was a candy shop that was on Alberta Street for a while. This was the owner of that store. So I'm just gonna, you know what? I'm gonna go go through so you can see more. Um, oh yes, also in Alberta Street. Actually, these are Alberta Street pictures. Uh, I love this man. Um, he was from Nashville, Tennessee. Also from Tennessee like me. And if you look at his picture, you can see his story. Um, you can see, you can see that he's from Nashville. Um, you can see, uh, <laughs> You can see his, this, I love this bike. You see this bike here? Uh, this like riding bike, this sitting back bike, you know, um, he is relaxed. Um, I don't know if you would call this, I don't know, I'm not a big bike person, so I don't know if you would call this a cruiser or what. Um, but he's riding, you know, and this, this, this cowboy hat, you know, like he's here. This, these are all the details of how you pay attention. Um, I, yes, and this is also, uh, 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 this is on 15th and Alberta Street. Um, this is down, this is at the farmer's market. I believe this woman was from Kenya. 
this is on Deacom in the Woodlawn area. Uh, this is um, this is a um, actor who was on that show Grimm. I don't know if you all remember that show, but um, I took his picture. This is another gentleman. I took his picture downtown. This is actually um, someone who went to King's School, um, a writer named Mitchell S. Jackson. And I actually took, uh, I actually took photos of him at King's School. And this is another, um, this is another way to, this is another, how do I say this? Um, this is another, this, this also speaks to, um, well, you know, what I was saying about the stories that are powerful or the ones that are, are right around you. And so uh, he's, he, has, he has written books about, um, about, uh, about Portland, about, about growing up in Portland, about his family and community in Portland. Um, and he's still doing that. Um, and so uh, being able to, you know, um, that the stories that are valuable, they're not always far, they're right there. Uh, and so he's another artist in this, um, from this uh, place that you can look to for inspiration. And yeah, like also history, like I took this picture, I don't know how maybe four or five years ago, like being able to share with you now that stories collide, they're, they, that they, um, influence one another. Like I'm inspired by this person, you know, um, that we can encourage each other through storytelling. Uh, this is, this is, uh, this is in Gresham. This is a, 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 a grandfather with his grandchildren. Uh, this is another artist here, Sidonia O'Neill. I love this picture. I love soft, I often love soft focus pictures. Um, I love the detail of the brim of this hat. I love her. I love just seeing um, her presence that kind of shadow uh, underneath. You feel something there, something close and intimate. Another, um, another Black Portlander. Um, you all um, may know, some of you may know a Nikki Brown clown. Um, and so she's amazing. Uh, she does a lot of work here in Portland. Black Portlanders. And often, um, often, um, often, when I do this, um, people tell me that they know people that, uh, when I do these presentations, they told me that they know people, you know, um, that, 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 that they know this person, that, uh, this person is their family member, or often I will do a talk and sometimes, um, you know what, I did a talk for some students over at, I had a show at Portland State University and some students came and um, one of the students there, I had taken her picture like a few years before and she had, was a little older then. And so, and so she was actually in the exhibit to that, that, I, uh, that I did. Um, yeah, like stories collide, we're all in a community together. Like it, it's just, it's yes. This is downtown Portland, downtown. This is on the bus. Yes, coming back to adventure. Like you can take pictures on bus, you can take pictures on planes. You can tell stories all in all these places. Like everything, it's all so, it's all so much. This is downtown by Powell's. This is by, was it the Max Line downtown? This is a shoot I did of Black Portlanders at Mount Tabor. 
see where we're at. This is a, a um, where was this? This is in the Willamette Week a couple of years ago. So then people tell stories about the stories you're telling. Uh, and it all layers, it keeps layering. The stories keep layering. And then I tell you about the story someone else told about this. It all keeps influencing. Uh, and then, um, let's see. Um, and so I started the Black Portlanders in 2013. And then uh, a year or so later, um, I was asked by the Urban League of Portland to document um, and to talk to and to interview along with the, along with the journalist named Bruce Poinsett. Um, black Oregonians, so um, black people in the state of Oregon, in Pendleton, in Bend, in Astoria, down in Klamath Falls, um, because black people are also out in the state of Oregon. Um, I know, I don't, once again, um, you know, um, the history of this state, you know, um, when it was founded, I know some of you know, uh, it was in the constitution that black people could not move to this state, uh, could not buy property, um, could not sign contracts. So that all influenced history layers, you know, that influences the present. Um, I know in the state, I, I don't know if it's grown, but you know, there's about 2% um, of black population in the state. And I don't know what it is now in Portland, but I know at one point it was like 6%, maybe 7%, I don't know if it's grown, I know, but yes, so sometimes there's this idea that there are not any black people in Portland, that there's not black history, but black people are here, have been here, um, and our stories are important. And um, this is the power of story to influence and to, um, yes. Yeah. So, uh, oh yeah, so this is the journalist that I work with. He's a storyteller. Um, and so, yeah, so this was, this is a screenshot of, we went from Portland, Oregon to, I don't know what that says. Is that Pendleton? Um, okay, yes. Um, yeah, so adventure. You know, I started out taking pictures of my community in Memphis, my family members. Um, and then I started taking pictures of, well, I had a, a few of the projects before the Black Portlanders, but then I started taking pictures of Black people in, in my neighborhood, a few blocks from where I lived in Portland. And then, uh, and then we traveled to take pictures of black people outside, like adventure, all this influences things. So this is, where was this? Oh man, not Bend. Um, mm, LeGrand, was this LeGrand? This might've been LeGrand. And I love this picture. I love this portrait. You know, you have this, you have this gentleman and then you have these iconic um, Oregon, the trees, you can see environment, you can see this man against this Oregon landscape. That feels really powerful to me. Uh, this is out in Astoria. This is out in Pendleton. There's a history of black cowboys in Pendleton, Oregon. Um, and I talked to him and photographed him. Uh, so going from Alberta Street to Pendleton, there's history, there's, there, there's, there's power, there's importance. Actually, I'm gonna show you all real quick. And he talked to me um, about um, the history of black um, cowboys in Pendleton, Oregon. And he was telling me that when he grew up, he knew a man named George Fletcher and that he, um, that he uh, was a cowboy and he, he um, he um, he rode in the Pendleton Roundup. I know some of you all are, you know, are uh, maybe know about about the Pendleton Roundup. Um, and so, yeah. So um, actually, and then I went all the, and then maybe a year ago, I was down in New Orleans, and uh, I was at this um, this place, um, and I found a picture of George Fletcher, and this is. Um, this is what I mean about how stories influence, about what we do in our lives and how you never know you'll like where you'll find a story. You never know 
um, how stories layer and influence us. So this gentleman told me about George Fletcher, about this black man he grew up with, um, an elder in his community, similar like how I was saying, like the, um, you know, that black photographer that I knew influenced me and showed me that this was possible for me. Um, yeah, so in any case, I found this picture. I hope you guys, wait, you know what? Um, do I want to stop this screen share to show you this? Um, you know what, just take a look in this little, in this little, um, wait, let me see if it's gonna work. I'm gonna stop the screen share. Hopefully this, this works. If I can escape, because I want to show you all this. I don't know how to make myself the main person here. Um, but is there a way for me to make myself the main person? I'm, I'm seeing you as the main person right now. Myself. Oh, you are? Okay, great. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. okay. Well, I want to show you all this picture. Can you all see this? Wait. <laughs> If not, let me know. Put a piece of paper behind it. Okay. Yeah, because I, I, I felt it was important. Actually, I'm gonna take it out of this sleeve. I know we don't have that much more time, but I wanna show you this because this is all history. Like I like I like I really want um, you know, I think about these pictures, how they'll be important to us in the future you know, how seeing Black Portlanders in maybe in the year 2070, you know, what these pictures will mean to be able to see uh, Black Portlanders, to see community members. And I also, I mean, I took pictures at KS Mocha last year, like even thinking about like what the pictures that were taken, you know, the pictures that the art you all are making, like, you know, the documentation of you all thinking about artwork, what it'll mean in like 2080, this is really powerful and important. Um, let's see here, hopefully, because I, it could be because I have this, can you all see that? Ooh, I'm gonna try yes. to keep it in focus. That's pretty good, hold so it right that's there. George Fletcher at the Pendleton Roundup in 1911 maybe in Oregon. And so he, um, he, I'm going to, I'm going to read. Okay. So this is called a real postcard. So it was made from a digital negative. Wait, no. So yes. So back, back in, back in these times, <laughs> back in those times, um, basically from what I hear, a real photo postcard is, they took the negative and then they made a print and then the print was the post was the postcard and that was how people shared photographs uh or one way people share shared photos back then now we show pictures on like social media and stuff but back then you had real photo postcards um and if you look on the back can you all still see let's see it says postcard and uh, let's see here. Action photo of famous African-American cowboy, George Fletcher, 1890 to 1973. Competed against Jackson Sundown, uh, Ness Purse Indian, indigenous. Uh, uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just reading what's on here. And John Spain for world title in Saddle Bronc finals at the 1911 Pendleton Roundup, W.S. Bowman photo at Pendleton Roundup, 1911, early 1930s to 40s real photo postcard. Okay, um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you all that real quick about, as you know, it's you know, it's not just about the photographs. It's about the engagement and the conversations you can have with people, and then how those conversations influence how you see the world. So, in in talking to this um to this black elder cowboy in my time he's telling me about his elder and then i'm out in new orleans and i'm like what's this and i recognize it so it's all so important like all these stories influence um yeah i don't i wanted to leave some time for any questions you all might have um 
And I'm excited to talk to you all the next time. Um, I'm glad that we're getting to do this a few times such that we don't have to rush. Um, yes, are there any questions? And if not, I can just show more images. There's already a question in the chat. Okay, know. let's see. Let's look at this chat. From Chris. Okay. Okay, yes. Um, has pandemic changed your photography? Uh, yes and no. Um, whoo. Uh, yeah, um, I, I took a lot, a lot, I've been taking, I took a lot of time this summer to just like, like so many people, just be safe, take care of myself, be at my house. Um, and then as we've gotten a little better at understanding, a little better at understanding, oh, we're still in this moment. Um, what's everything that's happening um, with this, um, you know, we've gotten a little, I don't know, we've gotten better, but you know, I'm not gonna talk about that. Hold on one second, I'll be right back. Um, I have been out. Um, yeah, um, I've done, done some photo shoots, a few things outside, socially distanced, always with the mask. And even the other week when we had all that smoke um, and those fires, which was so scary and traumatic, um, I, you know, I felt like I wanted to get out even though and document and I had had, um, uh, I had been given this, uh, I had been given this, I had been given this like respirator um, by people in community here in Portland um, to help document the protests. And so it also came in handy during the smoke. Um, and so I went out with this, with this, with this respirator one day, just trying to document black people at their houses, in, in their houses, actually, um, um, uh, yes, yes, um, yes. And, um, I, yeah, like I even, I even went out to document another of the, uh, artists in, artists in, artists in, artists in, artists in residence. Um, yes. And, you know, and yeah, it, I, I had to go out like this, you know? Um, yeah. So I don't, I don't know. It has. I'm just trying to be safe while documenting things. Um, and even, hey, I, you know, I, because I like to share details, even it was, I spent a lot of hours out there and it even like, it made my nose, this like a suction thing. It made my nose swell. And I've been like, I've been like putting oil on, I had like an abrasion, like, so it's changing my life. The pandemic is changing my life. Um, yeah. Are there any other questions? Into so I remember running running into you in my neighborhood a few months ago, mm -hmm. um, taking, taking a photograph of a house on yes. night, and you were saying that that was part of a series you were doing on the history of significant Black families in the in Portland. Yes, um, what's, that what's was, going on with that? Yeah, I was working on a project, and I'm actually still working with them, but it's a little different for the architectural heritage. Um, center here and um, this this uh, document that had to be approved by the state and go, go, to go to the National Historic Register about, um, um, about places and buildings of historic significance to Black Portland history. And so that, that day that I ran into you, um, um, I was taking pictures of the Rutherford House and um, they are a black family that's been here. Um, and they um, helped, I believe, co-found the uh, NAACP and they helped um, here and they helped pass maybe, um, who I can't think of the, maybe a public accommodations act. So um, yes, yeah, so it's also like, um, yeah, people, buildings, historical significance. Um, yes, um, and that, um, and you know what, actually, maybe the next time that I talk, I'll share some of that uh, work, because one of those buildings was actually approved for the National Historic Register, the Billy Webb Elks Lodge. Um, yes. Great, thanks. I think there's another question in the chat now. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I think it's a bit of both, depending on the situation. Um, sometimes I'll, you know what? I used to carry my camera with me all the time, all the time. And now I don't do that so much. Uh, I think I got a little tired of having a camera on me all the time. But um, I mean, I know what I care. Often I care about photographing people and I care about documenting uh, people of African descent specifically because our histories and stories are so often obscured. And in this city specifically, and um, you know, in the larger American culture, you're thinking where you're thinking about films and media, it's very important for me to uh, contribute. Um, yes, and so, but I also love pick people's presence. I love portraits. I love a uh, style. I love intergenerational things. I love children and 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 people my age and and also elders. I love connecting. Yeah, perhaps it's more connecting generations. I love that. Um, what else? I love environments. Um, what else? It's also, it's instinctual because it's also collaborative. Like even, uh, even, even running into uh, like uh, being able to like, even of, uh, even like uh, being, even like um, as I was taking those pictures of the house, like like running into someone that I know on the street, like, and then, you know, it's all collaborative. So it's, yes, um, very specific, but also collaborative and responsive. Intasar, thank you so much. That was absolutely fantastic. Um, we really appreciate you spending um, time today to share so many beautiful images with us. Um, and we look forward to you coming back. And so for our folks that have, are, are not clear on what the uh, artist lecture series looks like, looks like this year for Chaos Mocha, um, each of our artists will have three different opportunities uh, to come and talk to us about different components and aspects of their practice and everybody will approach it in a different way. Um, so we are grateful to you and to Sar. We look forward to the next time we get to uh, hear from you and see what you're working on then. Um, I wanna make sure everybody knows that next week we'll be hosting um, the artist Sohela Azadi, who is also based here in Portland, Oregon as our um, our, our third lecture in the series. You can find the full schedule on our website and that's at ksmocha.com. Lots of updates also on Instagram at ksmocha. And if you want to follow Intasar on Instagram, Intasar, is there anything you want folks to know? Oh, um, yes, just my name. Um, okay, yeah. so you can follow Intasar at at Intasar Abioto on Instagram if you're curious about um, some of the other projects that she has been um, putting out into the world. There's, there's quite a lot. So that is our hour for today. Uh, we really appreciate everybody and we hope that you have a great afternoon. Thank you all. Thanks Intasar. Yeah. <laughs>